Prophecy 43, Part 1. I am God the Potter, you are my clay. My gifts are not for sale. February 3rd, 2001. Spoken through Reverend Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Word originally given for another brother, Chris, but it is for all apostles and prophets concerning the prophetic schools and other attacks on God's messengers. Example, Brownsville, Gold Fever Revival, Gold Dust Revival, Rodney Howard Brown, Laughing Revival, Prophecy Clubs, which is nothing more than popularity contests, a clique which apostolic prophetic ministers like me have never been invited. True apostles and prophets are being silenced, manipulated, intimidated, humiliated, disqualified, discouraged, and chased away, all because they speak my truth, offending the flesh for the sake of my spirit. So the wolves can line their pockets with silver and gold, telling the people that the Holy Spirit's gifts are for sale. Healing, delivering, prophetic gifts are not for sale. This message is not for everyone. If you hear Daddy God's voice speaking to you one-on-one, -on -one, then it's for you. If not, then warn the others who promote the prophecy schools, such as Pam Clark, Andrew Strom, and Craig Martin. These are only three, and yet the newest lie of Satan is, you're not a prophet if you do not go to a prophet's school. God's gifts are not for sale. Pray in the Holy Spirit tongues for this ministry is already under attack for speaking forth this newest message. Again I say I am only the messenger. Please don't stone the messenger. I have nothing to gain but obeying God. Also say a prayer of intercession for the site manager and all those who labor with me, supporting me with their love, prayers, or financial support for the blessings to quickly be released and also extra protection from the enemies who use the occult who seek our destruction and destruction of this ministry please pray for abundant financial blessings so we can do more for the kingdom of heaven and a greater anointing like John the Baptist for bringing in the lost sheep and in all areas and especially the gift of discernment also pray for the male covering of this ministry who God calls Nicomaya will come forth in boldness, realizing God has qualified him no matter what anyone says. It is time for him to join me in taking the gospel to the world and all prophetic messages given to us. I believe the name Nicomaya is a spiritually spiritual name, and in the Greek, breaking up the name, it means Nico, victory. Mia belongs to me. Please pray for all bondages and hindrances to be removed from my life immediately that hindered me from accomplishing what I was born to do and he was born to do. We are ordained to be soulmates and partners in this ministry. I have now waited 12 years waiting through the counterfeits for although they were called, God would not choose them for they could not pass their tests. For many are called but few are chosen. It is not about who I am. It's who this ministry represents, and Nicomaya must be willing to lay down his pride, man-made doctrines, personal motivation, reputation, courageously bold that this ministry will be run God's way and not a church organization's way, nor man or woman's way. He will realize that we can't do nothing apart without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He will realize that this is a confrontational ministry, and at times we may offend the flesh, but we will have one purpose, to lead souls to Yahushua, Jesus, pointing the way to heaven, warning of hell, teaching holiness, the importance of keeping the true Sabbath day, teaching the uncompromising word of God for the glory of Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Holy Spirit. If you are interceding for us, will you please let us know so I don't feel so alone? Please pray this year I would know the blessing of having a male spiritual head of this ministry and this household a man who is more anointed and who will love, protect, and defend this ministry and myself like Yahushua does. Thank you for agreeing with me, for this is the desire of my heart. Prophecy 43 I am God the Potter, you are my clay. My gifts are not for sale. My beloved one, hear me clearly through this handmaiden of mine. If you have heard it once, I will say it again. 
I do not call the qualified. I qualify the called. You are being promoted, and yet you act as though I am demoting you. You hear my voice, and yet you continue to test what you know to be true. Remember, you are held accountable for what you know. I do not tell my secrets to you only for yourself to know, but for you to share the secret knowledge I give you with those I tell you to speak and share with. It is not your responsibility whether the messages are believed. Your responsibility is simply delivering the messages. Whether the message is believed is up to the hearer of the message. You are to be the doer of the message and deliver what I tell you to say and not edit it or cushion it in any way. Are you more afraid of offending me or the people I send you to? I am taking you to a higher anointing and I have given this handmaiden these words to give to you. I am promoting you to the head of the class. Who are you to say you don't deserve such a position? Who are you to say you're not qualified? Am I not the potter and are you not the clay? Do I not have the right to mold you and use you the way I so choose? I love you and I know you and I know what I put inside of you when I saved you, when I created you and when I called and chose you. Do you care more about your reputation and what mankind thinks of you or what I, the creator of all, thinks about you? I ask you to do nothing I have not asked my other apostles and prophets to do, and that is to obey me and seek my will, and I will lead and guide you and never forsake you, and I equip my warriors before sending them into the front lines of combat. You never go into a battle alone. I am there, nor empty-handed or naked, Put on the full armor of God and draw my sword, not yours. Take my shield of faith and quench the fiery darts that are aimed at you. Beware of Judases that come to you in the form of sheep and yet are ravenous wolves. Pray for a greater gift of discernment and never think you have enough of that gift, for no human can ever say that they always recognize the face of Satan. Beware, for the devil knows my plans for you and he knows where you're weak and where you're strong. My true apostles and prophets do not need a prophet school. They are schooled in the schooling of hard knocks as they are knocked down again and again in the flesh. But when they arise, it is with a greater anointing and no longer the flesh that rises up, but my Ruach HaKodesh that rises up. A prophet school cannot teach what only the Ruach HaKodesh can teach. What price can be put upon such a gift as I bestow to my apostles and prophets? Who dares teach how to prophesy? Woe be unto these false fleshly teachers of lies, merely to line their pockets with gold and silver. Be not deceived, as the wolves set up judges that speak lies and encourage false apostles and prophets that are not of my Ruach HaKodesh, nor listening to the true Ruach HaKodesh. The self-proclaimed judges that judge my true apostles and prophets discourage them and encourage the ones that move in the flesh and not in my Ruach HaKodesh. The prophet schools chase away and intimidate my true prophets and apostles. But they are being trained whether they listen to these self-proclaimed judges of my apostles and prophets or whether they listen to the judge of all creation, the great God I am. Do not waste your money with such foolishness. For these schools are training the flesh and not even hearing my Ruach HaKadosh. Harsh words, but true. They speak of only blessing and not warn about rebuking. Yes, I exhort through my apostles and prophets, but I also use them to rebuke and send warnings of repentance. And yes, I send my blessings, but I also send my curses to those that disobey. I send my apostles and prophets to speak before I send judgment. This is why my true apostles and prophets are being lulled into a deep sleep or intimidated or are afraid of offending the flesh. This is why I am sending this handmaiden to wake up my true apostles and prophets and to expose the wolves in sheep's clothing that seek to silence my apostles and prophets in any way they can, making my apostles and prophets think if they don't belong to a certain group or go to school to prophesy or if they don't speak in proper grammar then they dare not speak and they are not called. I call the educated and the uneducated to speak forth my words in all languages using all ages. Everyone who hears my words and accepts them will hear what I want them to hear. Certain words will have dual meanings at least, just as the Bible does when you read and meditate on it more than once. You will hear something by my Ruach HaKodesh that you do not hear or see before. I am sickened as my prophetic messages are edited to sound correct according to fleshly education. 
Who is to say what is proper grammar? Do all apostles and prophets only speak one language? Are they all the same age, race, or gender? Are they all from the same nation? No! I even speak out of the mouth of babes. Stop trying to put I am in a box. Stop trying to say what I will do and what I am won't do. I do what mankind least expects. No man nor woman can really know the mind of I am. When I tell my children where to walk, you walk. When I tell you where to run, you run. When I tell you what to speak, you speak. When I tell you to be silent, you be silent. When I tell you to stand still, don't move. When you don't know what to do, do nothing until you have peace that I am has spoken. When the enemy reminds you of your past, remind the devil of his future. When the spirit of condemnation attacks you, then remember this. I do not condemn you, so who are you to condemn yourself or allow anyone to condemn you? Your sins are as far away as the east is from the west. Picture a fishing hole and realize only you and the devil can go fishing for past sins that I have long ago washed away with my shed blood at Calvary. You must put up a no fishing sign there and don't go fishing there any longer, nor allow anyone else to go fishing there. I have paid the price. Don't allow the devil to remind you of a past that no longer exists. The old has passed away and become new. Let me ask you this. Do you rewash clean clothes? Then stop reminding me of what my son Yahushua washed away. You are qualified for the new position I have called and anointed you for. If you doubt this, then you're saying the God you serve makes mistakes and you know more than I am does. Is that what you're saying? Is the clay going to tell this potter how to mold and use this vessel of clay? I have anointed you for such a time as this. The time is shorter than you think to share what I have given you to share. All doors are opening now if you will but behold the blessings I have reserved for you and accept what I am giving you. Remember, Elijah of old was not the one in true need, for he blessed the widow more than she blessed him. Elijah never was in true lack, for how can one so anointed be lacking in anything? How can you be lacking any good thing when you are blessed with more anointing and gifts than you have yet even realized? Study and read carefully the scriptures I have told my Elijah of new to give to you. As you have blessed her, now she has been told to speak these blessings unto you. Can you not yet discern one another? You two are more alike than you both know. I have chosen to introduce you both for my purposes, and there are no accidental meetings. Your ways are not always my ways, but my ways are always for your good, and no good thing will I withhold from either of you. Both of you stand before me, and both of you have tried to tell the master potter how to mold you and use you, and both of you have said, I am not worthy of such a task. But I say to both of you, of course you're not worthy by yourselves. I do not choose the vessels who boast of their worthiness or great value or beauty, nor do I choose those who think themselves more highly than they should, nor choose the vessels who think they are doing me a favor to be used in such a way. I choose vessels who know by themselves they can do nothing and speak nothing of value unless it is under the anointing of my Ruach HaKodesh. I do not choose you because you decide to promote yourself and think you're better than anyone else. I choose you because you know you're not the best and your wealth nor lack of it does not impress me nor what you have or don't have. The only thing that impresses me is the fact that you know with God all things are possible and I choose my apostles and prophets from those that are least likely to be chosen in the world's eyes. I choose the least likely to confound those that think themselves wise. Study and meditate on the below scriptures and you will know if this word of knowledge is meant for you. My sheep know I am the only good shepherd's voice, for what child does not know the voice of his father? If you do not hear my voice, then this message is not for you, but copy it for you will be reminded when the time comes to send it to another person. This is a one-on-one -on -one word. Although originally given to another, it is not meant only for one man or woman or child. Jeremiah 1 verses 4 to 12 The prophet is called. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. 
I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Isaiah 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you our potter. And all we are the work of your hand. Jeremiah 18, verses 3 and 4. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Well, I pray I have been used to be a blessing to you, and would you please let me know if this word bears witness to you in any way. I am only the messenger, so please don't stone this messenger. But if you do throw stones at me, remember, they will only bounce off me and unto my daddy, God, Yahweh, and Yahushua, and Holy Spirit. For that is who speaks this message forth. I have nothing to gain by doing this except knowing I am obeying my daddy God. I really would consider it a privilege to pray with someone like yourself, for God himself has validated you through this word if you hear daddy God speaking to you one on one. Lately I have noticed how when the Holy Spirit speaks a, a word, it seems it is for more than one person, although it is originally meant for one person, which is you, Chris. Please let me know I am ready to release this to the rest of the apostles and prophets. Please reread this more than once. I know I shall also. A lot of meat is here, and please let me know if it bears witness to you. For those of you who have been deceived by Satan and silenced the true apostles and prophets, and yes, women are apostles also. The Holy Spirit is not a respecter of gender, only willing vessels who will speak forth in boldness of the Holy Spirit, and not in a timid voice in the flesh afraid of offending people more than the desire to enlighten them for their soul's sake. I waited to release this word because the original one it is intended for has not received the email in which I sent it in. Perhaps he is traveling out of the country. Please pray this man will get this message and reply to me in a spirit of love and not be offended before Valentine, before Valentine's Day. Chris, you are the one that stirred up this anointing in me just by praying for you daily. You say you're more than able to be my intercessor, and you are the man whom God used to bring me encouraging prophetic messages several times when I needed it the most. It seems the apostles and prophets who are used to bless others in this way, so few take the time to seek a word for us. Chris, when you read this, remember the word was originally spoken for you, but forgive me, I can't hold back this prophetic word of knowledge any longer. The elect are getting deceived. Note to my intercessors, Chris is one of the names he has used in his correspondences. I don't discern it in his real name but I don't want to release his real name in case this would offend him. I am attaching this personal note to prove to him I first tried to reach him with this word of knowledge. Pray, if he is involved in a prophetic school such as the one God warns about, he will hear Daddy God warning him to flee quickly from it or raise up in boldness and speak out against the prophetic schools, only out to silence the true apostles and prophets and line their pockets with gold and silver. Much love, your sister in Yahushua, Reverend Apostle Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya.